back to Northwest City Politics in the know with Juanita. We're glad that you're joining us again this week. We're always happy for people like you, people that are interested in what's happening in the cities in our area. Each week we'll bring somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to share what's happening in the city and what's going to be happening in the future and then encourage you, if it's an in item that's of interest to you, that you contact your mayors and city councils and keep, them, keep in touch with them on issues that are important. Now, it is the fall, so there is an election, and one of our cities has a city election this fall. Golden Valley will have a election for mayor and a couple city council people. We'll bring on candidates from Golden Valley who are running currently and share their ideas and thoughts with you. And be sure if you're in Golden Valley, take down their name and phone number. But also if it's an issue that interests you, contact your city and get them involved. Now I'm very happy tonight to have uh, Maurice Harris who is a candidate for the city council in Golden Valley. And along with him, we'll have Steve Schmidtko, who is a candidate for mayor in Golden Valley. And we'll get some information from both of them that would help you in deciding who you want to vote for if you're one of our Golden Valley audience. Now, let's start first with Maurice. Uh, we'll ask you to kind of introduce yourself to our audience. Tell about your background and how you think it's prepared you to be on your city council. Thank you, Juanita. Um, first, I want to thank you for doing the show. Um, it's so important for people to be involved in the process mm -hmm. of learning about what's going on in our city government right. and also have people just involved in So uh -huh. this is a great service that you do. Um, a little bit about myself. I am first time candidate for city council and I'm currently on the Human Rights Commission for Golden oh. Valley and also the Rising Tides Task Force which is our um, equity task force to help the city implement their equity plan. Oh, so right. to ensure diversity on boards commissions, for example, as well as issues like contracting, mm -hmm. um, just ensuring that the operations of the city government that everyone's involved and that everyone have, can have access to. Uh -huh. So that's why I kind of do with the civic side. Uh, my day job is I'm a research manager with Greater MSP. It's the oh. regional partnership for the Minneapolis St. Paul metro area. Uh -huh. So we do economic development work, um, business attraction, as well as several our initiatives to help make this region one of the best in the country uh -huh. and in the world. So it's a fun job. I work with data every day and it kind of does try to, you know, put our best foot best foot forward for the region. And so that's a little bit of my background and I think why I'm running for office is I believe that Golden Valley is an amazing place. Uh -huh. um, I've been resident there for three years now, um, and I love what the city has to offer. The people were great. We have, I think, a very good city, but I think we do some things better um, in operating and thinking with a more innovative forward thinking future, uh -huh. future um, on several issues of housing, economic development, uh -huh. um, transit and transportation, to ensure that you know our city can be great now, but also be even better 10, 20, 30 years down the line. Right. And so, this campaign, it's been a lot of door knocking so far, a lot of talk to residents, and um, they're very interested in what I kind of have to offer um, and what can, I think I can be a service for Golden Valley. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting process yeah, when it, you get involved, and it takes time. It's it does. A lot of work, it takes but a lot of time. It's interesting. <laughs> it is. It's, it's been so far so good. And then there's lots of issues that are involved yes. in our cities. What's an issue that's of importance to you that you'd like to share? A, your, con your thoughts about the issue and what you think should be done and not done? I think one issue that I think is very important is housing. Um, I think ah. not just, I mean, in our city, um, you know, product values, going, product values are going up, which is good for the homeowner, but also in a sense, it kind of starting to lock out young families, for example, who are looking to first start a home. Oh, right. And so, and currently, um, there's an issue with that since, you know, once housing above like 200, 250,000, it's kind of like, I can't live here. <laughs> right. um, as well as when you look at from starter homes to aging in place, especially with property tax going up to a point where some residents like, I, maybe I can't afford to live here because I can't pay the property tax. Ah. And so for me in this campaign, it's um, kind of looking at this issue from building a strategy to ensure that we can have housing from starter homes for uh -huh. families to aging in place 
as well as a, you know apartments and multi you know um, housing for apartments as well as different housing options to ensure that there's a balance across the board. Um, and I know the State Council has already done this great work starting with 4D, for example, which we'll see we'll talk about uh -huh. soon, um, to, for property tax credits to help keep affordable housing and to right. build new affordable housing as well. But for me, it's that important issue where, you know, you want to make sure that people can find a place in Golden Valley, stay there, live their entire life they choose uh -huh. to, and it just makes a strong community. I think, you know, when we don't have affordable housing, you can't have that great mix of people. Right. You can't have stable neighborhoods or stable communities, and that hurts everyone in the community. Um, and so for me, that's a poor issue for me. I'm a renter myself. Uh -huh. And so when you kind of look at that, you know, you want to make sure that people can rent if they choose to, buy a house, um, look at, and those options as well. So for me, that's kind of a very important issue for me with work housing. Are there any particular things that you'd like to see done or that you've heard of in other communities that you'd like to explore the ideas further? Yeah, there's so 40, 40 I mentioned is a tax pro, a tax um, credit program, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, <laughs> um, about that. So if, a, for example, it gives a break for any developer who wants to build affordable housing, but there's that cost gap where, uh -huh. you know, the, they want to make a profit too, understandably. Oh, right. But at the same time, we ensure that there's housing options. Um, review zoning, for example, to look at building mother-in-law apartments. Uh -huh. Currently, our code doesn't allow for that. Right. And so if, if you have an older elderly family member who wants to live with you, but not in your house, <laughs> <laughs> but you want to still have that option that they live close by uh -huh. to allow that as an option as well. Um, so for me, it's looking at all the, all the options for our communities as well and seeing what can we do to build a strategy that to ensure that we have that kind of balance. Um, it's not a one, one, one off idea where right. this will solve everything, but it's a strategy that's a strategy that takes time and it takes, you know, it would take not just, you know, it takes years to do that to oh, ensure it right, goes through right. the process and that, you know, it can be a long term process to ensure that we can build it over time. It didn't happen overnight, it's right. not like we solved it overnight. Yeah, and it's, it's a, uh, a concern that goes across the entire Twin Cities. Yes. So it's picking up on um, the, I believe the Metropolitan Council is encouraging everybody to yes. really tackle this issue. And yeah, the Met Council will do their estimates of how many, how many um, affordable housing units need to build mm -hmm. to, get, to ensure a good housing stock. Um, I believe our number was around between 2,000 to 3,000, give or take. Uh -huh. And so that's, for us, we're a, kind of a landlocked uh, right, city. Right, right. don't have a lot of land that's just open for greenfield development. So it had to be very strategic of how we know what available land we have, how can we use that to be you know, more dense, denser development that uh -huh. makes sense in that area or, or community. And so kind of looking at this from a kind of big lens downwards. Because in the, the day, it's kind of like, for all the strategy great, you want to make sure that you have a community that people can love and appreciate oh, and right. can live in. Um, so for me, it's kind of that the wonky side of it, uh -huh. <laughs> but also knowing that you know, if you don't have a good, if you don't have a place to live, it's impossible to do anything. Hard right. to have a job, right. hard to have a solid family, solid structure, um, good communities, good schools. Right. And so it's it's kind of it's so important for a say like ours to ensure that because mm -hmm. knocking on doors and talking to people and people who love their neighborhoods and love uh, the people that live next to them and you know it's a really kind of unique place that we have okay. and so right. the goal is to try to keep that and not you know have it go away from the point <laughs> and so for me it's you know looking at those strategies and finding what fits best for Golden Valley uh -huh. with community input uh, for me this campaign is about you know bringing people to the table uh -huh. and hearing their concerns and the issues they face and they've seen going Valley and make sure their voice is heard as well. And so for me, with a four rounds of economic development, always ensuring that we are listening to the people and making solid decisions around those, behind those concerns they have. Right. Another issue that you think is important that you've been talking with people about or you're concerned about? Um, economic development, I work in that world. Uh -huh. <laughs> so for me, it's kind of that, that pet unnatural. issue of mine. It's a natural <laughs> issue for me. And for economic development, I think to ensure sustainable development mm -hmm. is so important because people want good quality jobs. I think we're a unique place where we have a Fortune 500 in General Mills located here. Yeah. We have two great companies in Pentair and 
um, Allianz. And for me, it's ensuring that we keep those great companies here, attract companies to fill in our vacant commercials, commercial space, as well as help our small businesses. Um, I think we're in a unique place where we're in the middle of a metro. We're at two major intersections, 100, 394. Right. Um, I think we're in a great spot where we could attract, you know, the next General Mills, maybe. <laughs> I'm right. Um, or, you know, that's, that person wants to start a small business and, you know, want to start here. And I think we need to have a toolbox in place where we uh -huh. have not just when we think financial after TIF and tax abatement, but having a streamlined per permitting process where it's easy for them to get to the process. Uh -huh. um, being there as a partner to help them because we want businesses to succeed here in Golden Valley. Right. And we need to show that our best foot of we're here to help and not to be, not to me to be a hindrance, but to, you know, work with our partners as well in the community. So Hennepin County and the state, oh, right. they have they have resources for small businesses, for example, that we could tap into to uh -huh. help them. And so we just need to be a community where we want you to succeed and we're going to show you how we can help you do that. And so for me, it's, you know, economic development is so important for it to develop a great community, to ensure that people have good paying jobs, um, to help the tax base as well. <laughs> and so that kind of kind of springs forth to get with housing and transportation. Right. It's kind of very important with the with economic development. And what would you like to see the city be doing maybe that it's not doing yet? Well, I think for us, I think I think I would love to have like a strategy in place of okay. you know who we are, what we want to attract, what kind of tools that we have available, um, how do we mark ourselves as a city in this region uh, by show by you know showing our assets, uh -huh. showing what available properties we have. I mean, for example, the Optum site that's on 55 that um, side so benefit MSP has been sitting there vacant. <laughs> right, um, right. How do we market that site better to encourage companies mm -hmm. to move there? And so I think we could do a lot of, I think we do, if we have a strategy in place of knowing who to target, uh -huh. knowing who we are, and knowing what we can offer to companies um, to come here, I think it would be a great step forward. Uh -huh. um, as well as another thing is downtown, or lovely downtown, Golden right, Valley, right. Um, to make that more pet friendly, uh, pedestrian friendly for people to easily access um, downtown right now. It's kind of hard doing that. Mm -hmm. you know, with Neck Avenue and 55, right. that's kind of a, I mean, it's almost like Frogger almost right. trying to dodge cars in a way. Um, especially if you're walking. Across. Especially walking. Um, I did the Golden Valley, um, Taste of Golden Valley back uh -huh. in August and crossing over to the other side, it was like, uh, let me, if I run fast, I think I dodge those two cars. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make for a friendly downtown right. or to help encourage development. So I know they're starting, they're kickstarting to review the process of reviewing what sort of options mm -hmm. are. And so I think as a community, we need to have that, you know, that conversation of what we want to do to do that. Because um, in order to ensure we do it right, right, when you have all the voices at the table, they have a concern of what they want to see from that. So I think with, I think all this is ensuring that people have a voice at the table right. and that we're listening to their concerns, or their comments or their ideas. I'm not the smartest person in the tool shed, <laughs> but someone may have a great idea that, right. that will work. And so that's part of the process, I think, to assure that, you know, everyone's involved and that oh. we, you know, do things with their involvement. Right. Now, tell the people out in Golden Valley, why should they vote for you come November 5th? I, I believe that I'm a person that has the experience and the background to lead Golden Valley um, to be as city council. And that my goal is to ensure that we bring people to the table that feel left out of government. Um, that we want to make sure that this city works for everyone and that we um, continue to you know, work on our, our great things that we have and just make it even better. Um, be innovative, to be forward thinking, to think that we um, can make a better city government with, us, with everyone involved. And so I want to be that person that can bridge that gap and ensure that we can have a government that can work for all of us and include everyone at the table and to be, you know, come up with the best ideas to make us unique in this region. Thank you. So, that's why I'm running. Thank you so much. We'll move on to Steve Schmidtkoff, mm -hmm. who's um, incumbent city council, but running for mayor. Correct, And yes. maybe you can introduce yourself out to our wider audience. Yeah. I'm Steve Schmidtkoff. I'm running for mayor of Golden Valley. I've been on the city council for seven years. I was on the planning commission for nine years before mm -hmm. that. I am the uh, liaison from the city 
government to the Golden Valley Historical Society. Mm -hmm. So uh, by doing that, I got myself elected vice president of the Historical awesome. Society, and that's been very exciting. I'm the chair of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Task Force, uh, which completed the Bicycle and Pedestrian Chapter for the Comprehensive Plan. Mm -hmm. Been very involved in District 281 over the years because I, I had two kids right. uh, come through that district. And uh, I, I want to join Maurice in thanking you for putting on this program. I know you've been doing this for a while, and we appreciate you keeping our community well informed. Thank and, you. Uh, and I will tell you, I'm very gratified to be here with Mr. Harris, uh, learning more about his his uh, program for mm -hmm. the city. So, uh, very uh, informative evening for me. I kind of want to get back uh, in the city government, back to what I consider kind of the core mission of uh -huh. city government, which is uh, targeted or strategic development, uh -huh. uh, infrastructure maintenance and enhancement. Uh, fiscal responsibility and effective governance and you've heard this before <laughs> because uh, the Golden Valley City Council at a workshop I believe it was about five years ago yes, came up with those right. four pillars right. of what kind of the core of our strategic initiative for the ensuing uh, period of a year or two and, uh, and it really appealed to me as uh, a real good uh, recipe for city government. So, mm -hmm. um, with regard to development, these are uh, incredibly exciting times we're in. Uh, Mr. Harris mentioned some of the ideas that have been floating around. One thing that I've said many times is that throughout the world, there's a migration into urban areas. Right, it's right. It's not a Minnesota thing, uh -huh. it's not a Golden Valley thing, it's a worldwide thing. And uh, in addition to uh, about a thousand additional housing units by 2030. Uh, Golden Valley's being a, predicted to need uh, 222 more affordable housing units by uh, by the year uh -huh. 2030. So, as was as uh, Mr. Harris mentioned, Golden Valley is fairly built up, so yes. we need to be uh, well strategic about how mm -hmm. we provide these additional units, and part of it involves uh, the mixed use zoning area which I worked on the planning commission several years ago when we created the mixed use zone for the corridor along interstate 394 oh, yeah. and that had worked reasonably well but the planning commission recently and the planning department of the city thought that could be improved so they took another look at mixed use they it wasn't really mixed enough along 394. Ah. As it turns out, there were a number of viable businesses in there, mm -hmm. automobile dealerships, and they had no intention of leaving anytime soon, so mm -hmm. it made it a little difficult to pursue the plan. So they enhanced the plan and rolled it out to other parts of the city. Ah. So uh, it's always been my notion that Golden Valley can increase its housing stock uh -huh. by increasing density along transit corridors, right. like inter, uh, Interstate 394 is an example, Highway 55. Mm -hmm. I often compare Highway 55 to a river of molten lava <laughs> that runs through our city because it's very hard to get across it there. It is, it uh, is. And I do have some ideas about uh -huh. where we could provide access uh -huh. across uh, 55. We've well, we've talked about bridging over uh -huh. near the city center. I'd like to see some underpasses sure. similar to what's under Highway 100 at uh, Lilac Drive uh, in order to increase the, the access uh -huh. there. Uh, Douglas Drive is another example. As you know, we recently completed yes. the upgrade of Douglas Drive, which right. I'm, I'm very pleased with. I worked on that on the Planning Commission, and then uh, uh, it came to fruition when I was on the City Council. There are leftover spaces along Douglas Drive, which I think would be excellent for higher density housing, even affordable mm -hmm. housing. The city has done, I'm very grateful that City of Golden Valley has a very active core group, uh, the Affordable Housing Coalition. Ah. In fact, uh, during the campaign season, uh, Maurice was there. They had a uh, forum for, for the public 
devoted just to affordable housing. Ah. At that forum, we talked about the tools that Golden Valley has put in place for affordable housing. Uh -huh. We've developed a uh, tenant protection ordinance, oh, so that yeah, I read about tenants that. that are living in uh, uh, NOAA units, naturally occurring affordable housing, have to have a suitable 90-day uh, warning before uh, their before the property can be sold so they can plan ahead. We have a um, mixed income housing policy requiring developers to provide a certain number of uh, affordable units. Ah. And as uh, Mr. Harris mentioned, the city is looking at this 4D incentive program, uh -huh. which will encourage landlords to extend, to, to hold affordable rents for 10 years ah. in return for property tax. Ah. Uh, abatement and uh, the city is even going to offer upfront money to uh, to help with the, the clerical and the paperwork of uh, entering that program. Right. So um, uh, that'll be an excellent program. I've said, as uh, Mr. Harris said, I it's my goal that Golden Valley will provide housing for the entire arc of a person's life. Right. We've got the Hello Project, which is yeah. young professionals, right. and we've got. Uh, single-family homes. The single-family neighborhoods have always been an important uh, part of our community. And now we've got some significant uh, uh, retirement opportunities coming uh -huh. up. There's a memory care and assisted living facility under construction right now next to the Tallow Project. Right. So these are all combining to make Golden Valley really a lifelong place to live. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I mentioned was infrastructure mm -hmm. enhancement and, and maintenance, and uh, we're nearing the end of what was to be, I believe it was going to be a 20-year street replacement oh, right, program. Right. We started, as, as I recall, when we started out, and I was before my time, <laughs> it was about $500,000 to do a mile of street, mm -hmm. now it's something like a million yeah. and a half or, or two million. So, uh, in order to uh, control the costs. We've right. had to reduce the, the mileage in recent years, uh, but we are very near the end of that program. So I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, uh, as far as uh, the other thing I mentioned, f uh, fiscal responsibility, the city has made excellent strides recently mm -hmm. in uh, positioning, positioning us to pay down uh, the debt on the Brook uh, Brookview Community uh -huh. Center and on the pavement management program and it, at some point in the future we'll be in a position where we can consider other projects. I know um, complaining about taxes is kind of a perennial thing but <laughs> if you look back Golden Valley has been really successful I believe in in keeping taxes uh -huh. very nearly level. Uh, in fact uh, it was, it was uh, pointed out that last year the taxes uh, the property value actually exceeded the increase in the value ah. of people's property actually exceeded the uh, increase in the tax. Ah. So um, that's a desirable situation Definitely. to have. Uh, effective governance, another area, mm -hmm. uh, and I believe much of that is uh, as things Mr. Harris mentioned: uh, the equity task force, the um, uh, the rising tides task mm -hmm. force, rising tides is looking at every aspect of city business, uh, contracting, employment, uh, provision of uh, the public services mm -hmm. like Brookview, uh, to ensure that those are being offered equitably to all residents of the area. Um, the, uh, the Human Rights Commission mm -hmm. that Mr. Harris serves on, uh, it's a, there's a great story about that in the Golden Valley Historical Society. Ah. It explains uh, uh, there was an incident with uh, with a musician that uh -huh. uh, was arrested several times, and as a result of that unfortunate experience, Golden Valley became one of the first communities to have a human rights commission. Uh -huh. So uh, that story had quite a happy ending. Right. So. Right. Are there any other issues that are important, but to a different level for you? Something. Well, um, um, as you know, uh, tobacco is uh, ah, coming up on right, our, one of right, our, right. our next meetings, and uh, um, I, 
you know, I understand about, uh, certainly understand about the, the health uh, issues with tobacco use by young people. Right. Uh, my wife's an employee of the public schools and has shared, you know, the heavy use of tobacco there. And we really need to address that as a society. Mm -hmm. And um, I had, it might be my preference that the uh, state that it'd be a statewide, be right. uh, but but it has come before us, and I and I think it's important for our community to join other communities that have raised right. the age of uh, tobacco purchase. I had hoped to um, minimize the impact on businesses, mm -hmm. uh, small businesses right. in our community, and and I think that we've been successful there. Mm -hmm. By uh, we're going to allow. We have 15 tobacco licenses uh -huh. in our community now. The intent is to allow them to sunset uh, as the businesses right. close or, or whatever it might be, and then um, try and target down to eight uh, licenses over right. time. Well, I'm going to stop you there because we've got getting to the end of our program, and I want you to have an opportunity to tell the Golden Valley people why they should vote for you on November 5th. Well, they should vote for me because I want to, as I said, I want to get back to the business of uh, uh, the core mission of city government. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to, I want to uh, really focus on that strategic development. Uh, I want to focus on infrastructure maintenance and enhancement. I want to focus on effective governance, and I want to focus on fiscal responsibility. Uh, we've been very good at those uh -huh. things, and I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to continue with that. I also think, as I mentioned, with um, you know, going over and under Highway 55, uh -huh. or uh, uh, I think we're in a real position to really make some plans for the future. There was a task force that created a, a pedestrian promenade, if you will, that mm. would start at the uh, the track shopping mall uh -huh. in downtown Golden Valley, right, right where that tunnel goes through yeah. the mall. Right, it lines up with a with a road across the street and an opportunity for a bridge over the uh -huh. uh, over Bassett Creek uh -huh. and a continuing of that uh, promenade on right. the other side. Uh, there's also some opportunities on the uh, city government side of the downtown mm -hmm. area uh, for redevelopment, mixed use. Again, we've, we're all tooled up with right. a great new mixed use ordinance. So. Uh, uh, we're in a great position to do well, some amazing things. I want to thank both of you for sharing you. time and your ideas with our audience out there. And we'll encourage you, if you're from Golden Valley and any of these issues were important to you, be sure to contact Maurice Harris or Steve Schmidt-Gall because they would really like to hear from you. And we'll encourage you, be sure to go out and vote on November 5th and watch our programs through October because they'll continue to talk with, we'll be continuing to talk with candidates. See you next week.